Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube. Many people have been subscribing and being encouraged and knowing that they are cared for deeply. And this will help you to help others. Because that's what life's about. How do we reach a non-Christian society? That's, that's the question. Right now, uh, you, you bring up Jesus, you bring up God, all of a sudden people just are afraid, even faithful people are afraid. You bring up Jesus and God, you, you get thrown in a box. So the question is, like, how do we impact people when faith, for whatever reason, it deters people from listening to you or being open to you? Well, first of all, we have to ask ourselves the question, where did our faith come from? The people before us. Like, if you haven't checked out uh, my new podcast, Encouragement Conquers All, I can tell you that my grandmother is somebody that has taught me so much. She says, don't be a nuisance. That's what she said. Don't be a nuisance. Make this world better because you were born, Justin. I'm like, okay, you know, I will, Grandma. You know, she's Sicilian. You better listen to her. And she's almost 105. So if you don't listen to her, you're just dumb because she says that, you know, this, this country, this culture uh, is going downhill. And I asked her this question. I said, Graham, be, be honest. Be real. I mean, you started at World War I, World War II, Vietnam. You know, you, you, you went through, you know, the civil rights, you know, movement in, in America and all that. And what are your thoughts compared to all those other times? Is this worse or is it better? And she's like, well, they have more things now, but that's about it. She says, it's way worse. I go, Graham, way worse? How do you say that? It's way worse. She goes, look, what's right is wrong and what's wrong is right. So we need to look at who's gone before us. And for me, it's my grandmother who is almost 105 and she tells me it's worse. So we have to say that what would she desire for this nation? And she desires for us to fight for what's right, for what's true, for family, for faith, for love. And I want to do that for her because I love her so much. So this video is for my grandmother. And uh, you got to check her out, though. She's hilarious. So, you know, go on, go on our Instagram or our, our uh, Facebook and check out that podcast because you'll be encouraged. But the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, 8, For thou by grace we've been saved through faith. It is not from ourselves. It is a gift from God. Now, I want to call out, you know, different evangelicals or different uh, religious denominations who talk junk about Catholics. I, I want to just say something to you. First and foremost, don't speak for a Catholic, please. I'm sick of this. You know what I mean? It's like, we're day okay, look, let me speak for a Catholic. And what I'm going to tell you is, is that it is only by grace and faith that I get to heaven. It is only through Jesus Christ. Right? That, that's the only way that I get to heaven and anybody. So that's number one. Number two is this. I meet a lot of faith-filled people that they're, fruit or their actions don't resemble Christ. And I'm not going to say that's okay. And I'm not going to say that they're living for Christ when they're not. So, like, I just need to share that because for us to reach uh, a non-Christian society, they at least need to say we're on the same page here, folks. That people that love Christ aren't fighting a battle with one. I'm not fighting a battle with someone. Did you know... Most of my mentors in my life, most of the people that I personally call my, um, you know, religious leaders aren't even Catholic. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, you know, you know, Dr. Ken Blanchard, Danny Bugs, you know, who played for the Washington Redskins, New York Giants, uh, my good friend, David Tyree, you know, all these people. And we do have disagreements. But, but if we can't find a solid ground, faith, hope, and love, and that it's all about God and not about ourselves, then we're in trouble. We, 
We have to remember, as the Bible says in Hebrews 13, said, remember your leaders who spoke God's word to you. Imitate their faith as you consider the way their lives turned out. Look, the greatest example of that, starting with, with, with John the Baptist, was John the Baptist had disciples, had people that followed him. And the people that followed him were Andrew. People like the Apostle Andrew. Andrew died, right? He hung on a cross for two hours and he was sharing the faith while he hung on a cross while he's being mocked. And John the Baptist didn't like get out his machete and start like slashing people because they were going to behead him. He took it. And I think the only way we can reach a non-Christian society is that we take, and I'm not, I'm not, as good at this as even some of you might even think I am. We have to be able to take hits and be criticized and still have peace and love and faith in our hearts. We, we have to be willing to not take things so personal. We have to be willing to be able to love. And, and when people hurt us, for us standing up for what is right and for what is true and what is noble. You know, my grandma says it best. She says, well, you don't like me? You're missing out. You know what I mean? And that's the way we got to look at it. Like, oh, you want to hurt me? Well, you're missing out. Kill me. Hurt me. Mock me. Hurt my family. So, number one, we, we have to stop as, as religious people fighting with one another. Number two, we have to be able to really look at our lives. And when we're criticized, when we're mocked, we have to handle this with, with, an, with, with, with an idea that that person matters. I'll give an example. You know, a couple years ago, I was at a basketball tournament. That's why my voice is the way it is right now. I just had a tournament this weekend, and uh, I've been coaching for many years. And, and I'm at a tournament, and this guy literally gets upset because we're down 19 to 1, and we come back, and uh, we end up winning the game. Okay? And so this guy ends up, Literally, I'm in the line. Now, a lot of times when people are upset, and he was upset, you know, it gets hot and heavy during the game. But after it's over, you know, your friends, or your, your colleagues, you're encouraging one another like anybody is. And uh, he comes up, and we're walking in line. And all of a sudden, and if you don't know who Shug Knight looks like, look him up. Because this is what this guy is, Shug Knight. He looks like this guy. He's, you know, a rapper, right? And he literally punches me in the chest as, as hard as he could. And one of my parents jumps and he's ready to take this guy's head off. I'm like, oh, chill. I didn't even feel it. Chill, chill, chill. I was feeling it, but I just kept going, right, because he hit me pretty good. I know that what we want to do as, a, as Christians or as Catholics, we want to fight back, right? Like, oh, look this guy did. So they brought me into this um, tent, to question me on what happened. Did somebody punch you? And I was like, oh, I didn't feel it. It's no big deal. Now, if I would have made a whole big situation, would I have any chance, if I ever saw that guy again, to teach him forgiveness, to teach him mercy, to teach him kindness and peace and patience? And See, I don't always do well at this, but that time was a miracle. I stayed focused. Well, I always thought about this guy. I even prayed for him. And last year, I saw him at a tournament. And I went up to him, and it was a little awkward after I could tell. He was wondering, what am I going to say? And I looked at him in the eye and said, I just want you to know, I forgive you. He goes, oh, it's cool, man. No movement, no big deal, you know, this and that. Well, I found out he was running a tournament, and this was this past weekend. And I signed up for the tournament, and for whatever reason, he was promoting it, that Team Amazing was coming, and he was excited. I was like, wow, the guy's excited we're coming. So I went to the tournament, and at the end of the tournament, me and him were the last two people to leave the gym. And I was a little discouraged because we lost in the finals to one of our, our uh, rivals and what have you. And, and uh, he goes, man, you know, thanks for coming. I go, oh, man, thank you for having me. And I just want you to know there's been so many times that I've been, uh, you know, judged or, or mocked for, for, for how I live. He goes, oh, man, I got heart for you. And he like, puts a heart up, you know, like, and he's like, I got a heart for you. I go, oh, man, thanks. He goes, you know, my next tournament, you got to come. I go, okay, I hope I can. But I just want to thank you 
you really have healed me. You see, we have to take risks and take chances to forgive, to unconditionally encourage, to, to be authentic. You know, faith with less hypocrisy, right? Look, every society, if you study histories, had wars. Every society, if you study history, has had dissensions and factions and difficulties. But there was always a group of people who superseded with a Christian the Catholic message. There's a book reading like that I've read on the apostolic mission versus a post-Christian society. Like, how do we deal with that? And and how do we deal with being in a post-Christian society versus a society that has everybody or many people on the same page? And do you know what the benefits are to a non-Christian society? Is that people are more receptive to being real. People are more receptive to genuineness. And they're more receptive to uh, an urgency message because they need what you and I need, and they are looking for something more. And so right now in our post-Christian society, what we have to do is be willing to put ourselves out there because all of the missionaries and leaders in all of these societies when there was a non-Christian society, they won out eventually. You see, the big benefit is, is you can win out if you're willing to take that risk and take that chance. In this book, it's called Christendom to the Apostolic Mission. And I know the, you know, the man, the priest, Monsignor Shea, who wrote this book. And, and he says this, because one has to pay a serious price for the faith in an apostolic time, there is less hypocrisy than in at what's called a Christendom age, which is a Christian society. Like, there's more hypocrisy when everybody's following what you're living. You see, I have no chance to, to be a hypocrite because they're going to call me out. And when I am, they're like, look, what are you doing, coach? How are you living the message? You see, our faith has to be more intense, more attractive, and more evident and life-changing. And that's what uh, Monsignor Shea is saying in this book. And what I'm telling you is this. We have to change our lives. This isn't about us versus them or them versus us. This is about you versus you and me versus me. We have to be a witness. We have to be those people who are witnesses in our faith. And we need more witnesses in the sports environment. We need more witnesses. I have a new book coming out in the publishing world. We need more witnesses because modern man, it was said in a book one time, modern man listens more willingly to witnesses than to teachers. And if he does listen to teachers, it's because they were first witnesses. You see, people don't want teachers. Like, like when, when I go up and speak, do I tell the kids I have a master's degree in education and I was a double major in philosophy and education. If I say that, the young people in the modern society, that tunes them out. If I say I have, you know, I'm on my sixth book and I have two bestsellers, you think that helps? Or does it help that this is a man that, you know, is willing to die for what he believes in? You see, my legacy aren't my books. And my legacy isn't even the gym that we're going to build, which we will build. My legacy is the unconditional encouragement that I give to others. And I can tell you that what we need in this suffering society, you know, I don't want my greatest enemy to suffer. That would be hypocrisy because God does not desire us to suffer. You're like, well, why does he allow it? Because as people, as broken people, as people that have what's called concupiscence, like a tendency to sin, a tendency to do wrong at times, suffering creates a spirit in us to love. Uh, there was a, a leader in the past that said, first we must learn to suffer, then we can learn to love. Who are you grateful for? I'm grateful for that guy that hit me. Because you know what? One of the great days I've had this week 
wasn't losing a game. We won a bunch of games. We lost a couple games. That wasn't my greatest joy. My greatest joy was when that man who hit me gave me a heart. He gave me a heart. When that, the man who hit me gave me the heart. I'm grateful for unconditional encouragement. And the only reason I can be encouraging is because I was first loved by God who sent Jesus to die for me. Like, I'm not taking credit for this. It's the only reason I have this message is because of him, you know. And, and every person needs encouragement. But I want you to do me a favor this week. I want you to write a letter because I work with a lot of young people. And I want you to write a letter to a young person you know. And I want you to encourage them. Encourage them and build them up and see the good you see in them. When you write this letter, don't write it like, I wish you were here or I wish you lived this or I wish you got this message. Don't write as that. Go, I love you as you are. I love you with your mistakes. I love you with your successes. I love you with the way you treat your mom. Maybe they do it well. I love you with, yeah, it's it's been a tough time for you. And I want you to write a letter this week. And maybe even get the courage to do it every week until Christmas for for the next three weeks, four weeks. Write one letter a week just to encourage a young person. Maybe a grandson or a granddaughter. Maybe a son or a daughter. Maybe a friend. You know, maybe it's a person in your class. And I can tell you this will help you. If we want to change a post-Christian society, then guess what? We got to get it, get, it, get it done. Get it done. We got to get it done. And how do we get it done? By being authentic witnesses. By being real. And somebody asked me, like, why, why do you encourage people? And I say... Well, because I'm, no be- I'm, no, I'm no better than them. You know, I don't encourage people because I'm better than others. I encourage people because Jesus, he encouraged me when I was down. And you know what? That's it. You know, that, that's it. You know, you want to make it more complicated? You don't encourage somebody because they encouraged you. You know what that is? That's, that's like a dictatorship message. That's like, oh, you follow what I do. You do what I say. Now I'm going to encourage you. That's just like, that doesn't work. What works is when you encourage those who maybe discouraged you. You encourage those that are maybe struggling. And they're like, why would you encourage me? Because you think you're better? Or why would you encourage me? Because you think I need to change? No. I encouraged you because when I'm discouraged or when I make mistakes, Jesus encouraged me. That's it. That's it. And that's how we're going to change a post-Christian society. When they see our witness is greater than the witness of the world. So go be that witness. You know, if you don't, if you're not subscribing and you like these videos, please subscribe now. We have a lot of projects coming up. You can check out the new podcast. My grandma's on it. She's unbelievable. She's the cutest. You know, my wife's the cutest for me, but my grandma's the cutest 104-year-old in the world. And if you see her, you don't want to miss it because she is the cutest. Now you're like, I can't see her. She's on an audio. Well, we're going to get a video pretty soon. All right. But the other thing is, is, is go check it out. We have a lot of great projects coming out. We got a docu series coming out. We've been working on it for two, two and a half years on our basketball team, and uh, I got a, a new book I'm working on. So if you could lift up a prayer that we can uh, really make a difference with that book, and let's go out and encourage the world. Subscribe today, and I'll see you soon. <laughs>